good. You're probably going to want to roll up your sleeves because we're going to cut some... Bloody sleeves. meat? It's not that bloody. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece. Look at that. So if you want to okay. handle some meat, okay. <sighs> go so for I'm gonna, it. So I'm just going to continue to cut this vein yeah, right get, there. Get, get this cartilage and silver skin off. So this bison was just harvested a week and a half ago. They're never taken to a killing floor where, you know, they watch their family members get murdered in front of them. They're living happy lives, doing their own thing. And, and then one of them disappears. Yeah, pretty much. Video portraits of American trendsetters. 10 cities across the country, five episodes in each city. This week, locally sourced, organic, grass-fed, animal welfare approved bison meat. So we're gonna hop in the back of the truck? Yeah, everything yeah. in the back of the truck. Okay. What's up, dog? My name is uh, Hugh Fitzsimmons. This is my son, Patrick. And we're in Carrizo Springs, Texas. This is our bison herd. We have about uh, 250 animals total uh, over the whole ranch. We've been raising grass-fed bison for about 12 years. I raise them wild. Uh, I don't uh, corral them. I don't vaccinate them. Uh, they, they're just raised wild, and then we field harvest. How you harvest the bison? I select the ones I want to take, which are usually between two and three years old. Uh, I shoot them uh, right behind the ear, and that is the medulla oblongata. And when that is severed, the animal drops. No trauma, no stress, nothing. Well, I got I got to back up a minute. It's it's a it's a very emotional experience for me because I'm taking a life. So I have to get in the right place before I do that. I think that's one of the problems is so many people don't make that personal connection with their meat and they will, you know, they're willing to eat the hamburger, but they're not willing to look at the animal. So that's one of the things when I'm, you know, selling it at the farmer's market, I show people pictures. A lot of people want to see that now. They're starting to want to make that connection and not just be like, oh, I don't want to know what goes on behind the closed doors of the slaughterhouse. Uh, we got all the cuts of steak, ground, uh, we got tenderloins, New York strips, ribeyes, all that stuff. Yeah, and this is all bison leather. It's all hand sewn and stitched. Oh, that's yeah. cool, man, full circle. For sure, full circle. Oh, absolutely. We're starting to use the horns now. We're starting to use like the hooves, everything. Yeah, this is my trailer that I've got going on now. Yeah, it's just down the street here at 5th and Colorado. I want to take this animal from every possible step of the process, from out in the field to serving it to people directly. So I'm just getting the veg. We're pretty much good to go. We've got the short ribs, the mashed potatoes, the collards, the taco meat. Okay. Uh, I'm just getting some veggies prepped. When Patrick and I started throwing this idea around, um, I had a few core requirements. One was that I would source everything locally. And two would be that I had creative freedom to do my thing. He's like, yeah, go for it, whatever you want, you got it. Why do you think it's important to buy locally? I don't want food in my body that's been sitting for two weeks in a storage facility. It's dead. It has no life force. It has no mana. I cut myself, burn myself. I mean, this oh. is grease burn, grease yeah. burn all the time. Just from it popping off in the pan? Yeah, I, I am very, very accident prone. Because I, I get kind of haywire, you know, I'm like, ah, ah. The menu is built around the bison, and, and just about everything is sourced from farms um, in Austin and around Austin, mostly the east side. How are they? 
That would have been awesome. Man, I'd love to hear that. All food trucks are not created equal, because anybody can throw up a food truck. But uh, I think it's got to be something special, you know, and something badass. And I think we're pretty badass. I very quickly realized that Austin was it. I found the most unbelievably receptive, intelligent audience that truly connected with what I was doing. It's always been in our consciousness that this connection existed between humans and animals. But now people are really starting to value that connection. I tasted sweet when I was the Next time on American Hipster Presents, from the live music capital of the world, we look at an up-and-coming music venue in East Austin, Cheer Up Charlie's. Out here at Shape Ranch, having a little target practice. As always, uh, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment below, check out the extra features. We're going to sink some more ships. <laughs> See you next time. Oh, man. Shotguns. Shotguns. I can see how it would be fun living out here, man. Oh, yeah, man.